welcome back to the IBSP. Here's your host, Foxy New. Welcome back, Fight Fans. Welcome back to another edition of Fanboys Exposed. And once again, it's facts, not feelings. And we get into the first, uh, you know, comment, and it comes from Ignacio Delgado. And he basically states, I used to like this channel until you mentioned Andy Ruiz Jr. Now, you know, when I mentioned Andy Ruiz in the video on, that he commented on, the only thing I said about Andy Ruiz Jr. is that he's a cheeseburger eating machine. And you know what? I've always complimented Andy Reid. says he has elite level hand speed. He's a skillful and proficient boxer. And you know, he's going to be a problem for anyone in the heavyweight division if he's focused, if he's in shape. And you know what? So the guy obviously didn't like the fact that I called Andy Reid Jr. a cheeseburger eating machine. He also goes on to state that he wants Fury and Anthony Joshua to go toe to toe versus Andy Reid and that he knows I will not respond to him. So I'm going to respond to you, Ignacio, and just break down how stupid you are. And the first thing we're going to get into is Andy Reese Jr. said Anthony Joshua's not good at boxing. The rematch will be the same. So since Andy Reese Jr. said that, Anthony Joshua boxed him in the rematch and dominated him. Not only did he dominate him, he landed nearly twice as many shots on him in that fight. And not only did he do that, how can he run when he's outlanding him shot for shot for shot? It's not Anthony Joshua's fault that he's a better boxer than Andy Reese Jr. than you thought. Let's just be honest and unbiased. The second thing is, you know, you have a, a issue with Andy Reeves Jr. You know, having a weight, you know, problem. The guy's a cheeseburger eating machine, whether you like it or not. Look, was Teddy Atlas hating when he said Andy Reeves Jr. You know, needs to control his eating problems. Was Pauli Malignaggi hating when he states that Andy Reeves Jr. came in like a fat tub of lard? Is Andy Reeves Jr. lying to himself and to you by walking around with snicker bars in his hands trying to advertise for them? Listen, it's not my fault that Andy Reeves Jr. is walking around looking like he's about to give birth. It's not my fault that he walks around looking like he's about to breastfeed a newborn. It's not my fault he's a cheeseburger eating machine. It's not my fault that his nickname is Andy Pizza Patron Ruiz. Let's get into the next fanboy. J Rocks. You know, J Rocks got pretty upset that I said that Amir Khan has a weak chin. And he states, You're wrong about Amir Khan. He got up from every single knockdown of his career, apart from the Canelo fight. First of all, J Rocks, I don't think you understand. Getting knocked down is part of having a weak chin. So if you get dropped, that goes into factors into you having a weak chin. Put it like this, especially if you're getting dropped by guys who are not big punchers. Prime example, Amir Khan said himself he should never get dropped by a guy like Samuel Vargas. He said that out of his own mouth. Turned around, got dropped by Samuel Vargas. And when he got dropped by Samuel Vargas, if you look at what Samuel Vargas is, this is a guy that has about 40 fights almost. And this guy has a 36% knockout rate. So a guy who's not fighting elite level guys, it got a 36% knockout rate. So he's a pillow puncher to some degree, and you get dropped by him. That's a weak chin. It's not my fault that Amir Khan's chin is as soft as wet toilet paper. Let's just be honest and unbiased. And let's get into the next fanboy, T. Morris. And he basically tells me to shut up. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't understand what I mean that Mikey Garcia scraped by Jesse Vargas. Uh, I need to get on new vision when I look at the fights. He doesn't understand how Mikey Garcia is uh, clout chasing money. Uh, he doesn't understand, you know, what I'm saying. He also states that, you know, Mikey Garcia is looking for competitive fights and he's chasing champions. So let's just break down his statement. And, you know, we get into it and we see that Mikey Garcia, you know, even according to Forbes, these guys know that Mikey Garcia is making the most money of his career because he's using his clout. And what do you, what did they mean by that? How is Mikey Garcia using his clout? When you look at it, he's playing against promotional companies. So if you look at it, when he goes over to the zone, they're desperate for a big name, a big attraction, a big star because they have to promote in the American market. And so when you look at a guy like Mikey Garcia, why would they offer him seven million dollars? And it wasn't seven million dollars to fight Jesse Vargas, it wasn't seven million to fight Manny Pacquiao, it was seven million dollars to fight anyone. No matter who Mikey Garcia fought, he was going to get guaranteed seven million dollars simply because they wanted him on the platform for that one fight. If Mikey Garcia was a mega national star, don't you think? That they would have gave him a massive deal like Canelo Alvarez, a multi-fight, multi-million dollar deal? Of course, because he's not worth that much. They just wanted to lure Mikey Garcia over to their platform and hopefully get him into bigger fights, which he'll be worth it, like a Manny Pacquiao fight. See, Mikey Garcia is chasing 
ch clout chasing the paydays. That's what he's doing. And I have no problem with it. These guys are in it. It's a combat sport. You're in it to get paid. I have no issues with that. My issue is when people state idiotic comments like this, even Bob Aram said, I'm not interested in promoting a, a fight for Mikey Garcia because his financial demands are ludicrous. This guy wants to get paid and he wants to get paid an extreme amount and he's pricing himself out of fights like Vasil Lomachenko. He's pricing himself out of fights at 140. So that's why he's at 147. And then for you to turn around and say, oh, Jesse Vargas, you know, he doesn't understand how he scraped by. Mikey Garcia had a very difficult fight with Jesse Vargas. Yes, he dropped Vargas and he hurt him midway through that fight, but he lost a lot of rounds in that fight. A lot of people had that fight extremely close. Even a few people had it scored for Jesse Vargas. That was no easy fight for Mikey Garcia. You got to be honest and unbiased. And I don't understand how Jesse Vargas turns into some fanboy god after all of this. This is the same Jesse Vargas who's not top five in the welterweight division. He's not beating any top five fighter in the welterweight division, period. And Mikey Garcia is not top five in the welterweight division. You know, Jesse Vargas is the same guy that had a draw with Adrian Broner. This is Adrian Broner who doesn't let his hands go. And Jesse Vargas had a draw against this guy. Let's be honest and unbiased. Even Mikey Garcia's own brother and father says that he's too small for 147. So how is he chasing a competitive fight? He's too small for the division. You know more than his father. You know more than his brother. Even Mikey Garcia got washed by Errol Spence Jr. Lost every single round. But he's chasing competitive fights. Look at it. Mikey Garcia is not beating your Denny Sugas. He's not beating Sean Porter. He's not beating Danny Garcia. He's He's not beating Errol Spence and he's not beating Terrence Crawford. The only fight, the big name fight that he has a chance at close to being 50-50 in a winnable fight is Manny Pacquiao. And that's simply because Manny Pacquiao is 41 years old. If Manny Pacquiao was in his prime, he destroyed Mikey Garcia.